so first of all, welcome and uh, hope you'll enjoy our, our talk today. And first question, for how long have you been staying in Belarus now and what's your overall impression of the country and drug sale operations here? Okay, first of all, I would like to say Dobrodin is Drasvite to all to by, uh, you know, fans and obedience. Yeah. Uh, so I have been coming uh, to Belarus uh, for about uh, two months back and forth, but for the last one and a uh, half month, I have been living in Minsk in this beautiful city. So this is my history in Belarus so far. Okay, so and what's your overall impression of country of Turk cell business life? Actually, uh, what I can say about my impression uh, on Minsk and Belarus that I was amazed, I was shocked, and believe me, I'm not saying all these things just to trying to be nice here, <laughs> because uh, I had visited many uh, other countries in the region, cities in the region, Russia, all CIS countries, and I've been to all Eastern European countries, and I worked in uh, some of these cities as well. My expectation about Minsk was more or less uh, average. Uh, uh, city but when I came here I was really shocked I like it very much and uh, I can confidently say that Yauchin Lublu Minsk Yauchin Lublu Belarus because this city is so neat so clean uh, everything is well organized and uh, there is no traffic this <laughs> was the biggest biggest surprise for me because where I live now uh, is in part of city and every morning it takes me only 11 minutes to get to the office this is uh, not a dream in Istanbul because it's Istanbul every day I was spending three hours in the traffic wow. uh, and uh, the other uh, thing impressed me uh, deeply is the people because having had experience with the people of this region uh, or this part of the world I was again expecting similar uh, things but uh, I realized that Belarusian people uh, are how I don't know what are the right words uh, but I found uh, you people very civilized and very uh, western minded uh, so the, these things are uh, really good points for me because this is a new country for me this is my new country I'm gonna spend I don't know how many years here here, but uh, seeing people like them and like the environment I am going to work is most important thing for me. So I am starting with very, very positive impressions. That's great. Nice to hear. And well, y y you've learned quite a bit of Russian. Do, do you yeah. plan to develop it? Yeah, I'm going to Russian and then I will speak in Russian. Okay, so. and, and do, do you plan maybe learning in a Belarusian even? Uh, actually, uh, I would like to take step-by-step -step approach and uh, I'm sure that if I can uh, speak good Russian, people will understand me. But of course, uh, when I am, you know, walking or driving around, I am reading the uh, labels, the street names, etc. I already started understanding the differences the difference. between Russian and Belarusian. And honestly speaking, in Russian, that O's becomes A's or A is uh, like difficult, but in Belarusian uh, it is more practical. <laughs> Maybe it's easier for me yeah, to yeah, learn Belarusian. Hear, uh, yeah, and, yeah. Uh, th that's the way how. But write. difficult language, though. Okay, so I think Turkish would be really different, uh, difficult for. For us yeah, also. but uh, <laughs> Russian is also like a, you know a puzzle or mathematical equation. Oh, you know, when something changes in the stuff. sentence, this this has got to be in first form. Then I cannot have another first form noun pronoun. But it is quite uh, interesting, and uh, I like it. And the uh, better I know about it, I am able to start talking to people on the street. When they understand me, I feel happier, and it uh, you know uh, motivates me to learn you. yeah more quickly. That's great. Well, I ho hope we'll, in a few, I don't know, years, we, we, we'll, we'll uh, do that talk in Russian. Yeah, actually, <laughs> I don't want to say years. In a couple of months, I should okay. be uh, you know, able to start uh, that conversations nice. in Russian. This is my promise to you and to all Tutpai audience. Okay, we, we kind of... And try me and test me, please. <laughs> Make that note. Okay, so uh, coming a little bit more to business. Uh, what's your main task of... Uh, here as CEO of Life Belarus and uh, what's your main task uh, set by yourself and what's the main task set by the Turkcell uh, management? 
And it is not a secret that uh, life investment of Turkcell uh, has been one of the highest amount of foreign investment in this country. And uh, of course, having invested uh, so big amount of money, uh, Turkcell uh, sees only one way to go in Belarus, uh, which is being successful. So my main task is going to be uh, successful here, but meaning uh, successful is not only in terms of financial figures. Uh, as company, we believe that Uh, we owe a lot of things to the people of Belarus. We came here as a foreigners, but now uh, we are residents of this country. And uh, you know, as a result of our investments, we were the first one who brought 3G to this country. And not only 3G, uh, or thanks to 3G, we have been bringing very, very new things to the people's life. And a lot of people in Belarus today using 3G services. And if you look at our neighbors here, in, for example, Ukraine, if we would like to make a benchmark. No offense to anybody, but uh, in terms of population, it's a big country, but uh, they don't even have a, a 3G services as common as in Belarus. So uh, we have been uh, trying to introduce new things for the benefit of uh, Belarusian uh, subscribers and our customers. Probably more and more Belarusian people are going to be live customers soon. So we are working in this direction. Uh, we are going to be financially and socially success, uh, successful company uh, in a near uh, term. And our first uh, point is to be a bit positive in next coming year. That's why we are all lined up and we believe in this uh, target very soon uh, we are going to be talking about uh, successfully uh, uh, financially very successful life uh, as well but you know uh, our current situation is not unsuccessful because in GSM operations in 3G operations especially when you are coming to a country as a third operator uh, first uh, couple of years nobody is expecting from you to be profitable so this is in the nature of business and uh, my team uh, entire uh, life team has been Uh, doing a great job for the last three years. I mean, our market share, our revenues have been, uh, you know, uh, consistently growing. growing, and we are going to continue that growth. Uh, hopefully, uh, we are going to be able to tell life story to everybody on the street, and they are going to get to know life better. They are going to uh, try and test our services, and they are going to see that the life today is a lot different than life three years ago and two years ago, because in the meantime, we have invested a lot, and we are going to continue investing heavily great uh, what are the actual numbers on live user base mobile internet users usage can, can you make a snapshot yeah you know what's uh, life today? life is uh, investment of Turkcell and Turkcell is uh, in the stock exchange markets in Turkey and uh, New York stock yeah, exchange yeah. market that's why uh, I'm not you in a position everything. to disclose all the numbers here but what we published recently is uh, about Belarus uh, we are uh, exceeding 1.7 million subscribers registered subscribers and hopefully next year we are going to be talking about much uh, bigger figures and uh, all our subscribers or who are interested in seeing uh, live and Turkcell's financial uh, figures. You can watch uh, quarter uh, results explanations, which are all public, and from uh, internet you can reach all these details. Okay, and what about mobile internet usage? Uh, so, <coughs> what you told about uh, 40% of the customer base. Yeah, actually, D does it number change? Uh, yeah, we can uh, talk about that figure again. But the good thing here is, uh, or it is a fact actually, not only in Belarus, in uh, entire world, mobile internet has been changing people's lives. Mobile internet has been changing our lifestyles. And again, as life. Uh, people as life employees we are proud of this because with us mobile internet uh, you know uh, really came to belarus and we happily uh, see that our data usage in our network is uh, increasing we have very good uh, you know utilizations numbers from our uh, network in minsk and in other uh, regions of course majority of uh, customers are from minsk but uh, as a result of this continuous growing in the data usage we are uh, gonna be investing a lot in 3g network in 2012 So, do, do you have those plans finalized? So, uh, Ojan told that you are going to, uh, well, that he has signed some uh, the plans for the capital expenditures in 2012. So, w were there, uh, those plans approved by Turkcell? Yeah, actually, uh, 
when Özcan uh, was on uh, duty here, he was planning uh, 2012 investments as a suggestions from local team. And what happens is uh, every year in December, uh, we have rounds of meetings and with our, uh, you know, uh, shareholders and the investors, uh, we discuss these plans. And uh, for the last three weeks, we have been massively working on these 2012 plans. And first half of December, we are going to finalize uh, our plans and get the approvals from our board. After board approves, uh, we will be able to talk more concretely about our plans. But as a message that I can uh, give to you now, uh, we are going to be investing uh, massively next year, basically and mainly on 3G network and also on our IT network. Okay. And what about 2G? 2G, uh, if you look at the coverage, uh, I don't know what is the uh, feeling in the market. I myself also traveling around the country. With three, uh, 2G, we have uh, very good uh, coverage. We already exceeded, you know, mandatory coverage levels. But, you know, on uh, 3G, you can uh, carry voice as well. It is uh, one of the features of 3G. Uh, yes, there are going to be some 2G coverages as well, but uh, main coverage is going to be on so the 3G be and on IT 3G. part because uh, with the next coming months and years, uh, we will all be observing that uh, the mobile internet is going to be taking more and more part uh, in our lives so that's why we would like to be prepared even that uh, trend uh, started okay and uh, <coughs> so uh, correct me if i'm wrong but uh, you you worked in a company which facilitated network development right before yeah yes so d does your assignment mean that life will continue <coughs> to well invest heavily in, uh, into infrastructure and well um, maybe your experience will help the company to <laughs> to grow faster on that side Actually, uh, my previous job was the infrastructure company. I was the general manager of uh, Global Tower uh, company. Uh, it was, of course, one of the reasons uh, why uh, Turkcell management appointed me or assigned me this job. But also before that, uh, for 17 years, I was working for a global telecom vendor company. Uh, so my expertise is mainly on uh, marketing and sales starts, but I'm an engineer. I uh, do understand all technicality behind all these my, uh, marketing and sales activity. Uh, and even in that infrastructure company, I guess uh, what we had done together with my team, we had increased our sales dramatically uh, and very good results. Uh, as a uh, summary, I can say that uh, wherever I work up until now, I was able to uh, show the management uh, with the, you know, of course, involvement of my team, growth, growth, growth. So here uh, we are going to be targeting uh, aggressive growth, but of course it's going to be supported with aggressive infrastructure investment. Uh, hopefully uh, it's going to work here again and uh, life is going to be in a much better position in terms of growth uh, and uh, penetration in the total subscribers in Belarus. That's great. And so uh, the main goal for life in 2012 would be growth, right? Yes, growth, but profitable growth. Ah, okay. And what will be the strategy in general, except for growth? Actually, strategy starts from uh, very basic basics, convincing people, because ever since I came to Belarus, I have been talking to people. I talk to waitresses, I talk to people walking on the streets. Uh, I am just basically asking them if they have a uh, life mobile number, was yes, life number, something like that. And according to the uh, answers, I am trying to understand why uh, they are not using life, uh, what is uh, the reason for them to choose life or not to choose life. And I realize that most of the people, uh, when uh, they hear life name they are uh, referring to in their answers they are referring to two years ago and two years ago we were really at the very very beginning of course two years ago uh, our network uh, was not as developed as uh, today and there were a lot of issues but for the last two years we have opened uh, you know hundreds and thousands of sites and then it's uh, dramatically and very significantly in increased quality coverage and everything and uh, we are gonna have to tell this story to the people on the street we have 
have to show them what is life today. Because again, everybody's life uh, perception is going back to two years ago, maybe even three years ago. So we, we got to change this. Once, once we uh, convince people to try to test our services, I am sure, I confidently believe that they are going to be surprised. Because if you look at the mobile internet, I don't see any, any issues in MISC. I don't see any issues in Grodna, in any of these uh, regions, Vitebs, Komel, uh, Mogilev, and breast. So uh, people has to uh, try us and it is our main task to convince people to try. So you'll be battling stereotypes, right? Yes, exactly, exactly. I mean, two years ago life and today's life is completely different. And let's not forget that we are the ones who have been bringing newest things to this market. And we have been deploying the latest technology. Our technology is really greatest, you know, second to none, uh, any of the available technologies in the market. Now, uh, we have to create uh, reasons for people to try it. And once they try it, I am sure most of them, majority of them uh, are not going to want to uh, leave us. So this is our target. We are going to be telling our story that uh, we are very close to our customers. We are listening to them. Whenever they have problems, we are doing our best to solve their problems. And we are motivated and we are excited. If we can uh, transfer part of our motivation and excitement to the customers, I am sure we are going to uh, catch a very good life trend. So that's why we are here. This is what we are targeting for 2012. Thanks, Ismet. And uh, well, th th that's great. But uh, you're you're in position for, uh, I would say, a month now, right? Mm -hmm. So yes. it was kind of yes, one month, one month. So uh, what's uh, your main achievements uh, for that month? So or or you are still kind of uh, getting uh, trying to dive deep into the situation. Actually, uh, whatever achievement uh, happened in the last month, uh, normally it, it was not because of me. <laughs> because the team behind of me uh, has been doing a lot of good things. And uh, whenever you do something today, you may see the effects in a couple of months, couple of weeks. I don't know. So I have been observing a lot of good things happening around the company, but I don't want to claim any of them as, a, uh, as of my achievement. Thanks to Özcan, thanks to my management team who has been spending tremendous efforts to keep this company up and running, running uh, to the better places. But my personal achievement uh, is to get to know people. I have been uh, very close to my uh, people in the first place. I am trying to understand uh, what my team thinks. And I realize that my team would like to see the future uh, of this company. And it has been my main role to talk to them about what kind of vision we have and what are going to be our achievements. And they have been very cooperative. They have been very supportive. Uh, I already, you know, feel uh, like home. Uh, together with this team, we are going to be reaching our targets. So I believe in them. I trust them. Uh, if they continue their uh, support, I am sure we are going to be reaching our targets. So I really don't want to talk about any, you know, very, very short term achievements, whatever we are achieving, hopefully. So you Looking you are going to invite me uh, at least one more time, you know, maybe next year around this time. Yeah, we'll and uh, this. I will be happy to tell you what kind of achievements we made. And then I can more confidently uh, claim that, yes, I <laughs> also had some part in these achievements. But right now, thanks to uh, Life Team, thanks to Özcan again. So uh, they have been doing a lot of good things. Well, good luck to you on that. Uh, great mission, and uh, so you're not gonna uh, make some shifts in the management team, and uh, or what? Actually. Uh I mean, we are all in business. Uh, this kind of changes can always be done. But uh, when I was uh, taking this role, it was uh, my commitment to myself as mm -hmm. well. We have to uh, make uh, this team uh, more Belarusian. Okay. And we already started taking actions. You know, uh, it is Turkse group culture. When we acquire uh, something out of Turkey, first we are sending some of our employees just to make sure that uh, we are going to be talking the same language in terms of, you know, uh, reporting in terms of understanding each other and everything. So uh, as soon as we start achieving that target, so we are uh, taking back our uh, guys uh, back to Turkey and we are uh, 
handing over these positions to the local uh, people. And the mission of these uh, expats, expatriates is to bring here know-how and to, you know, uh, grow some management team here and having uh, same ground level than going back and let the local team manage it. So we are not going to be running this operation by, you know, uh, exported people forever. So uh, beginning of next year, uh, we are uh, starting to uh, make some replacements from mid to high management team. But right now, uh, the top management team of the it's company the is going to stay uh, as is because I believe that they are all valuable people and some of them have been here uh, from day one. So they are, have been bringing a lot of experience. So I would like to uh, leverage their experience as well. I don't foresee any uh, you know, top management changes in very near future. But in the other management teams, we are going to be accelerating to uh, handing over to local people so they are, they are really very very good quality people here and very soon they are going to be taking over whole top management as well so this is the plan great talking about uh, life uh, in general are you uh, satisfied with the life team efficiency and uh, maybe you plan in some uh, layoffs or hirings for uh, no layoffs, months. but uh, this is an open invitation. Come and work for life, please. Uh, <laughs> it is amazing. This is one of the things I really loved in this country. If uh, you look at the unemployment rates. Uh, it is like a dream uh, for me, uh, for example. Here we have a serious problem for finding people and there is really good quality of people and they are all employed and I uh, realize that there are some companies, techno parks, a lot of industrial things are going and uh, sometimes it's really difficult to find uh, people for us. So soon uh, we are going to continue our efforts with uh, even universities. We, we are going to be trying to capture the best talent and to keep the best talent in and around the life. So this is uh, one of our missions and human resources issues are one of the top priorities for us because uh, I had a meeting a couple of weeks ago with uh, Mr. Minister. So I also explained to him that it is also part of our plan to uh, create some mobile applications in Belarus, not only for life, but also selling them to abroad and uh, bringing, you know, uh, currency to the country. In Turkey, uh, we are doing this. We have a company which is called Turkcell Technology. In that company, a lot of uh, mobile op uh, applications are being generated and sell sold to other operators. It is uh, also one of my personal goals. Uh, if we mm -hmm. can succeed uh, to have such a company here and start exporting mobile applications, then uh, I will be able to say that I went to Belarus and I did good things as well. So well, this is in plan as well. Well, th that's very interesting. But you know, uh, if you're going to have that mobile developers in-house here, uh, you'll be facing really good, well, really serious challenges because the salaries are really competitive and the market is highly saturated and th there are not a lot of free people in, in, in this. Yeah, but at the end of today, <laughs> uh, transferring know-how here because our company in Turkey is very successful and uh, their products are really demanded by a lot of mobile operators, even by the uh, competitors, some competitors of Turkcell. So at the end of the day, what we are going to be selling out from Belarus is going to okay. be high value thing. And then <laughs> at the end of the day, you know. So, so you'll be able to deliver high salaries. Yeah. In that case. And uh, so, um, do, do you plan to make a new company within the high tech park? Do, do you know about Actually, high tech park? Actually, right now Belarus? I am, uh, you know, considering options one by one, and I found out that there are really good incentives, and the government is really yeah. supporting this kind of initiatives. So I like it very much. Uh, everything starts with this kind of government support, uh, and then people are getting more and more motivated at least to try. So, uh, we are considering the options and uh, that uh, legislation is very flexible as well. I mean, you may have a different company in, uh, you know, techno park zone or you can still keep your own people in the company, still, uh, you know, enjoy the benef benefits of this. Uh, right now we are in the stage of, uh, you know, preparing some business plans, etc. And uh, hopefully in a couple of one or two months, we are going to see where we stand uh, from that uh, point and hopefully it's going to work for us. Oh, that's great. But it will be 
be definitely next year, right? Yeah, I mean, we have only one month and, you know, on uh, December 16, uh, New Year party is starting and people are going to be yeah. so excited to welcome the New yeah, Year. So th th there's no need to hurry. Yes, and yes. And you'll be focusing on uh, what platform? Android or... Everything? No, actually everything. I mean, uh, right now uh, we need to assess the, you know, human resources. What kind of uh, expertise we are going to be able to, you know, Deliver. combine and concentrate. Uh, according to people, uh, according to our resources, we are going to, you know, define the direction. But in Turkey, uh, we have been showing very good example of creating an ecosystem. And uh, if you look at our success story in our country, uh, back in Turkey, uh, it was based on ecosystem. So here, uh, not necessarily we are going to establish our own company, but uh, utilizing and leveraging the ecosystem partners, uh, we can also get the same results. Okay. Uh, b but you actually planning to uh, gather some development forces here and the yes, exporting? Yes, yes. Uh, 2012, we uh, would like to be in front of our customers with more and more applications. Okay. 3G doesn't uh, mean only, you know, getting connected to internet yeah, and, and using some uh, ready-made. No, we are gonna uh, also uh, trying to be changing the nature of 3G. We are gonna be trying to offering more and more features to our subscribers, our customers, and of course after that uh, everybody else is going to be uh, following us. At the end of the day, uh, all Belarusian mobile users are going to enjoy the benefits. Great. Uh, Ismet, and closer to real people, to real customers, uh, maybe you know that uh, one of your competitors increased prices from today, and well, another competitor da did it, you know, like months ago or something like that. Yes, yes. And you've done it also, but uh, are there any other plans for increasing prices? You, you know that there is a little bit uh, not very easy situation for the Belarusian economy this year. And well, uh, companies had to increase prices in order to keep up and uh, keep the uh, cap capital investments. Okay. So what what what's your position on that? Do you plan or not? What what should we expect okay. as as customers of life? If you allow me, I would like to make few comments about this economical uh, situation. Yes, yes. Okay. When I came here, uh, everybody was talking about this devaluation, etc. And I really didn't understand why there was, uh, you know, such a big surprise. Uh, then I found out that uh, it was very rare in uh, Belarus, these kind of things. But being a person uh, who lived in Turkey for many years, and I have seen at least three, at least three major crises. Mm -hmm. Okay, I was engineer at the beginning of my career. Uh, let's say that time my salary was around uh, $500 per month. Uh, and then one night I went to uh, sleep. In the morning I woke up and my salary was $135. Okay, Oops. okay. Huge uh, <laughs> like devaluation. And inflation in Turkey in those years were not less than 100%. 100%, 110%. And then it happened again a couple of years after. Again, one, two, three, you know, almost 300 devaluation. And it happened again. Uh, the recent was uh, one in 2001. So I am kind of uh, immune, I guess, this kind okay. of things. But having seen this country, yes, I mean, entire world is going through huge economical challenges. But... Uh, uh, this doesn't get you killed. This is my experience. I am still alive. <laughs> yes, I really understand, you know, having talked to people, uh, that economical, uh, you know, situation is really tough. Uh, but uh, these things are going to uh, get settled down. I truly believe in this because I have had three major, even worse crises in my life. And hopefully things are going to be getting better and uh, Belarusian economy is going to be more stable. You know, as a company, we are true believers of, you know, very bright feature in this country. That's why we have invested, you know, hundreds of million dollars, almost one billion dollars for the last uh, three years. So uh, we believe that Belarus is going to go through these economical challenges and end up in a very solid and healthy economic situation. This is part one. Second, uh, price increases. Uh, you know our slogan uh, was Mojna Fiso, right? Everything is possible. <laughs> and uh, we have been trying to show uh, 
everybody on the street and in the market that you can get uh, top quality and services by paying less. Our um, philosophy is not going to change. We are not uh, going to be, uh, you know, highest price operator in this market. But it's not because of our quality is any less than our competition. No. Was Mojna Fiso, and you are gonna keep continue getting the best uh, quality services from life at the lowest price. But according to uh, economical uh, changes, uh, dynamics, uh, of course we have to increase prices. But uh, we are gonna make sure that uh, we are gonna be offering the best pricing uh, to the market as compared to other competition. Okay, uh, so a mm, li li little bit more to the point. D do we d do you plan to increase prices this year? Actually, uh, we recently made announcements uh, for the price uh, adjustments. Actually, I want to call them price adjustment, not uh, you know uh, increase, yeah. because uh, we are not willing to increase prices, but we are forced to increase prices because. Everything else price is going up, our costs are going up, and we are uh, trying to keep it as reasonable as possible, and we are trying to uh, not to impact our customers. Uh, till end of the year, uh, after our recent uh, announcements, uh, I don't think that we will have to increase price again. Okay, great. Uh, do you have uh, in stash something very interesting for that holiday season? I mean, Christmas. Could, <laughs> could, you, could you make some early announcements or some teasers for our no, actually, uh, audience? Actually, we have been on air for last uh, three three days. Yes, three four days actually. New campaign for uh, you know our new androids. So uh, I had greatest chance to be on the you know. Uh, sh shooting of that advertisement, so I really like that uh, advertisement. Uh, I don't know if you have seen it. Uh, it says that you know service babushki, etc. So we are uh, introducing our new androids uh, to the you know uh, pleasure of our customers. And regarding new uh, announcements, actually uh, in the first quarter of New Year, uh, we would love to make some announcements. But uh, if you let me, I would like to keep them uh, mm -hmm. kind of hush hush now. So soon you are going to be seeing in the market. But as a you know general approach, we are going to be uh, working real hard to bring new services, new applications, not only to one segment of the market. So we are going to be trying to uh, reach each and every segment uh, of the market. Uh, finally, you, you've introduced a set of business-oriented uh, focused services recently, right? Mm -hmm. uh, do you plan to develop them this year, and uh, how do you plan basically to develop them? And are you quite satisfied with the uh, number of business customers coming to you because uh, of those? Actually, you know, life uh, for the last three years historically has been recognized as a, a, a brand name for youngsters and achievers. And uh, by keeping that uh, base, because youngsters are very important for every country because they are the most dynamic yeah. uh, segment. If you can really understand uh, what do this they segment, need? yeah, uh, what are their needs, uh, how do they look to the future, etc. You are securing future as well. That's why we never want to, you know, cut our link with the youngsters because they are the future of this country. And we started understanding them at the very beginning. So we will continue our journey with the youngsters. There is no doubt about it. And also achievers, and from achievers to business segment. Up until now, we have not been very active in the uh, business segment, in corporate segment. Uh, so hopefully, uh, market is gonna be feeling, sensing that life is bringing a lot of solutions, you know, custom-made solutions to that segment. This is one of uh, the growth areas for us uh, starting from 2012. Uh, so, so, so what about the rates now? Do you see the rate of the uh, business customers increasing now? Yeah, actually, we, as you mentioned, recently made some announcements. Uh, I cannot say that it, you know, jumped, uh, yeah, you know, of. over the top. Uh, no, but uh, what we would like to have in that segment is healthy, steady uh, growth. Yes, yeah, stable and uh, consistent growth. Okay. Uh, well.
Talking about devices, so mm-hmm. you, you mentioned them, and you know that Life was pioneering that segment uh, with the Android devices, with tablets. Uh, so, what's next, and do you plan to increase, uh, to continue uh, promoting and selling devices to your customers, or do you plan, in, I don't know, maybe to shrink it a bit and uh, introduce some other features? Actually, shrink is the word uh, I don't like to hear. <laughs> okay. During my life, I never talk about you know shrinking, absence, etc. Yeah, how about extension? How about enlargement? So this is what we are uh, trying to bring uh, to Belarus in 2012. Uh, regarding terminals, I believe that by bringing those Androids, we also did a very good job in the, uh, yeah, in the market. So uh, I, all I would like to say that market should be uh, you know watching us. Uh, Uh, closely, uh, I am sure uh, we are going to be bringing more and more uh, new things to their lives. Again, uh, 2012 uh, hasn't started yet, and this market is going to be providing a lot of opportunities to us uh, as life company. So whenever the opportunity window is open, we are going to be uh, doing our best to paint it with the best view. Great. Uh, Turkcell is a uh, partner of Apple and uh, is selling iPhones in Turkey. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, maybe you're planning to bring those very popular smartphones to Belarusian market? Yeah, actually, you know, that Apple uh, iPhone thing is directly related to Apple's uh, global strategy. Uh, so I really don't want to comment on it. Uh, but uh, let's see what is the demand in the market. Uh, but at the end of the day, it's not going to be our decision or it's not going to be Turkcell's decision to bring or not to bring iPhones to Belarus. So it requires, I think, uh, another level of discussion, another round of yeah, a lot of discussion. Yeah, Apple. Yeah, it, the Apple is nice to have. But if you look at our uh, Android phones, uh, if you look at how convenient all the services in Android for Android market, uh, most of them are free and they are really very convenient so uh, but if there is a strong desire from market i am sure it's going to uh, draw uh, apple's attention as well but as a company of course uh, in parallel to our customers requirements yeah we will do our best and w- what phone do you have actually uh, huawei android phone okay and uh, i didn't get the uh, most recent one because they are selling a lot i couldn't <laughs> find uh, one from the dealer yet <laughs> but well and uh, your most uh, y- y- you know what the favorite platform for you number one and number two actually before coming to belarus uh, i was uh, you know true believer of blackberry uh-huh. and i had started using blackberry in 2003 when i was working in the united states and uh, up until 2000 10, uh, I didn't give up on BlackBerry. In 2010, I started using iPhone. Uh, at the beginning, I didn't find it uh, very, you know, uh, convenient because uh, yeah, I was addicted it's... to BlackBerry. Uh, my fingers were like this, right? And then I uh, started using iPhone, and I enjoy it. Uh, and up until I came here and I was uh, iPhone user. Also, my Turkcell line is still on the uh, iPhone telephone. But here, uh, I became aware of Android. So I am using Android. Uh, when you make the analogy between Android and iPhone, <coughs> you don't see any difference. Uh, for some uh, stuff, you can find Android even more convenient. It really depends on the user experience. This kind of things is preference. Uh, of course, from engineering uh, point of view, you can put a lot of uh, facts on the table. But at the end of the day, the user is going to decide which which one is better. So, yeah, and uh, Androids are cheaper than iPhones. Yes, we, we, uh, which you know, really iPhones uh, they are very very uh, you know high price items, and uh, maybe one day they are going to get uh, you know low cost as well. But we will see. Android, with that money you are paying and that quality you are getting, is a perfect ratio, I guess. What do you think about Windows Phone 7? Uh, honestly speaking, I haven't tried it yet. Uh, so what I know is from the internet, from the you know, uh, advertisement. That's it. So I'm uh, not in a position to be able to make <laughs> any comment because I haven't touched it, I haven't used it. Okay. Uh, talking about technology again, uh, well, in a few days, uh, the company from Russia will be starting an LTE network mm-hmm, here mm-hmm. in Minsk and Grodno. 
uh, and that'll be a commercial network. And uh, Life was aiming <coughs> to pioneer that direction, to start in a commercial LTE, and uh, you've done some tests uh, yes. in this year. And, well, uh, you kind of been outrun by, by the other company uh, and all the other operators. So uh, Life, MTS, or Bell Telecom, they gave up, uh, gave up and didn't uh, took part in a... Uh, comp- uh, competition on the fre- frequencies mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. Be- because of uh, economical reasons. So, would would you uh, would you be uh, will you still be willing to deploy LT later on? And w- what do you think about uh, running an LT network of not a GSM operator? Okay, if you if you look at what does LT stand for, it is long term evolution unless they change it very recently, right? In long term, I mean, uh, we knew that it was coming. Actually, in 2001, I was working in the uh, U.S. then for that vendor. And in the year 2001, everybody was so excited about 3G, okay? You know, there were auctions all around the world, $6 billion, $7 billion, that million dollar. And then people thought that, oh, next day everybody is going to be using, uh, you know, 3G. I'm talking about 2001 and look at when uh, the networks are commonly, you know, uh, started using uh, 3G. It took years. And that time the uh, biggest dilemma was the handsets. Yeah, I mean, technology is ready. I mean, LTE was ready even in 2004 5. In those years, in the laboratories, in the captive yeah, okay. offices, LTE devices all were all over the place. And I myself also was working in one of these next gen uh, products in the US. Uh, but uh, tomorrow, if you deploy uh, LTE, what's going to happen uh, to the market? And we still don't know what's going to be the prices of the terminals. And this mobile uh, business is driven by terminals. I mean, if people uh, don't have terminals, uh, how are they going to realize that there is an LTE on the air? And if people are not able to uh, afford to buy an LTE uh, terminal, so what's going to happen to that network? It is, you know, uh, really long-term evolution, (laughs) and this long-term, how long is it going to take? The market is going to show us. I mean, you cannot just impose one technology to the market and expect people to start using LTE next day. So it is going to happen. I uh, believe it. But I don't think that it is going to happen soon because that uh, 3G market should be really mature before you pass into the uh, LTE stage. And again, the prices, cost of terminals are very important people's affordability and people's demands. Before you bring a lot of applications to the market, you may not even see the, uh, you know, reason uh, to use LTE. No, uh, 10 years ago, we were in a different world. Five years ago, much different. Last year, we were in different uh, world. Five years later, of course, it's going to be completely different. But as life, uh, again, we are fo- focusing on, you know, perfectionism on the 3G services. Very good coverage, very good quality. We already achieved these uh, milestones. We have to show this to the users in the market. LTE, if market uh, comes to that stage, of course, uh, we are going to be one of the pioneers of uh, new technology because we are the one in this country bringing the newest things to the country so this is our point right now okay so mm, not uh, there'll be not uh, LT network from life in next year Definitely. Actually, you know, uh, we tested it. Uh, honestly speaking, uh, regardless whether or not uh, Life is going to put an LTE network in place, I uh, question the fact that there is going to be big need in this market for LTE network. Hmm. And this is the, you know, uh, private company and we are driven by our customers and their desire. So if our customers are pushing for a LTE network, life is going to have an LTE network. But there, there has to be some, uh, you know, reasonable level of demand and investment. So this is chicken and uh, egg kind of things. Honestly speaking, I don't think that there is going to be such a strong demand in the market for LTE next year. What do you think about mobile unlimbs? So you, you've introduced uh, those quite recently, and you know, few months ago, I think. Mm-hmm. And uh, do you feel any strains on your network? And uh, when you were talking about investments into IT, what, what exactly did you mean? 
Uh, so, so do you plan to kind of strengthen the core of your network or something yeah, else? Actually, you know, these kind of high-tech devices uh, should be renewed uh, at certain intervals. So our uh, network equipments, uh, when I refer to IT, now, uh, for example, we are uh, investing for increase our uh, data storage capacity, keeping the one because it is still functioning, it's still in good shape. But in uh, parallel to increasing demand and increasing customers' usage, etc., we have to make uh, additions. Uh, we don't want our customers to uh, feel any, you know, delays or any misconduct Problems. of uh, our network. Uh, what we are trying to do is to get ready before we see that, you know, uh, jumps. This is just uh, precautions and uh, uh, preparations before uh, additional net, uh, growth in our subscriber base. And uh, for 3G, uh, yes, uh, and also the other part, a lot of unlims. If we look at our network, our customers are not facing any capacity or quality issues because of the, you know, heavily usage coming from uh, that kind of unlim offers. So we are going to continue offering this uh, to our customers by always uh, checking uh, that and making sure that our customers are not negatively impacted because of uh, heavy usage. But our network is really uh, huge enough and large enough to get more and more customers. Uh, because, uh, you know, uh, these are not secrets. If you look at the total number of customers of life and the others, we still have the largest room for our customers to come in and to, you know, comfortably uh, surf in the Internet and use our uh, data network. So th there won't be any firefight in it. It will be just the steady growth and development, right? Actually, uh, no, uh, we are not here for that kind of, you know, firefighting. Uh, as I said before, we believe uh, and we trust in our network quality. It is our task to let people uh, or to make people be aware of what life has in uh, the network today. So uh, our uh, task is to show what life really is to the customer base in the market. Great, thank and you. then people are going to be free to choose among us, three of us. Thank you, Ismet. Uh, we are moving to, uh, to, f to an end of our interview. So just two small questions sure. more. Uh, what was the most surprising, in positive and negative way, uh, w what were the most surprising positive and negative things for you in Belarus? I think uh, I was able to, you know, uh, list a couple of positive things yeah. about Belarus Minsk. Uh, what was the negative? Yeah, negative. Yeah, there is very big negative thing about Belarus. Uh, when I uh, before I came here, they told me that oh, it is so cold country. After October, you are gonna have heavy uh, <laughs> sn uh, snow, etc. Look, today is what 28th of November, so I am begging for uh, snow. <laughs> so <laughs> that there was, was snow the negative. One day. Yeah, one day, but it was not uh, serious. Uh, even in Turkey, we had uh, real snowstorms, even in, yeah, the, uh, in the last east, month. Think, yeah, yeah uh, east and even in the west, very close to Istanbul. So, negative thing, uh, I really and honestly haven't uh, seen any negative thing. We do like this. <laughs> Hopefully, I will never uh, see any big negativity in this uh, lovely country. So, I am uh, quite positive. So, uh, I am sure I am going to be seeing more and more positive things. Thank you, Ismet. And the last one, uh, which is traditional for uh, every interview on Mondays, uh -huh. uh, you have like two minutes uh, to say anything, wish anything to our audience, to your potential and present customers. So you're welcome. Say whatever you want. Your okay. Uh, actually, uh, again, uh, I would like to apologize from all the audience because I am still speaking in English and I mean it seriously. I came to this wonderful country and I am doing business and I'm going to be doing business in this country and I am going to be serving to the people of this country. Uh, it can cannot be in any other language. It's got to be in uh, r uh, local language, Russian, Belarusian. Uh, so uh, hopefully you will understand me. But I promise to you is I am going to be learning it very, very quickly because I am taking it very seriously as a, my target. And uh, secondly, uh, just to keep it short, uh, life is uh, really a good choice for you. And life has been making 
a lot of a lot of uh, steps uh, in this market please come and try us see our network see our quality and if you have any complaints about it please let us know if we don't know what the problem is we really cannot solve it i believe that your user experience is gonna be much better and it's gonna be uh, getting better and better just listen to us uh, listen to our uh, real story and try us hopefully you are gonna like it and as a result what i say is was mojna fiso so Dobradin. <laughs> Thank you so much, uh, Ismet Yazici, CEO 